This is an audio description of The Swing by Jean-Honoré Fragonard. The painting is oil on canvas. It measures approximately 81 by 64 centimetres and was painted between 1767 and 1768. The Swing is Jean-Honoré Fragonard's most famous painting. According to a story told by the poet Collet, an unnamed gentleman of the court of King Louis XV commissioned the artist Doyenne to paint his mistress seated on a swing. The patron made an outrageous suggestion. He asked that a bishop should be depicted pulling the swing, while he himself admired her from below. Doyenne refused the commission and suggested that Fragonard would be the most appropriate artist to take his place. Fragonard made the subject less scandalous by not making reference to the church. He replaced the bishop with an elderly man, dressed in the fashionable clothes of the time. The swing is known as a cabinet picture, a small painting intended to be admired in the salons of wealthy patrons. In a secluded glade, a young woman seated on a swing soars high in the air, watched from below by two gentlemen. They are depicted in the lower half of the painting, so that the three figures form a triangle in the composition. The ropes of the swing form taut diagonal lines that lead us towards the top right of the painting. The scene is framed by a variety of elements. A gnarled, sinuous tree trunk at the right edge, a mass of dark foliage at the top right, and twisting branches overhead. The sense of enclosure is completed at the left edge by two slanting tree trunks and in front an ornate column supporting a stone statue. The statue is almost hidden in the shadows. It is seated, viewed from the side, and represents Cupid, the god of love, portrayed as a naked young boy with a mop of curly hair. He raises a finger to his lips, inviting us to watch the unfolding drama, but to keep it secret. Foliage in the background, painted with delicate brush strokes, recedes into the distance in a haze of pale blue-green. The young woman is illuminated by sunlight filtering through the trees. We are given a three-quarter view of her figure facing to the left. With a smile playing on her lips and eyes open wide, she leans back, gracefully holding the ropes of the swing that are fastened to sturdy branches above. The young woman has fair hair piled up under a jaunty straw hat with a flat crown and a wavy brim. It casts a soft shadow on her face. She has fair skin and a little rounded chin. In contrast to a small mouth and nose, her eyes are large, framed with arched eyebrows. The skirt of her pale pink gown billows around her in a profusion of silk edged with ruffles. White ruffles decorate her elbow-length sleeves and a lace choker with a bow at the front adorns her neck. The neckline of her gown is low-cut and a small posy of blue flowers is pinned on her bodice. She daringly reveals an elegant foot, lifted to toss a dainty pink shoe into the air, and in doing so exposes her right leg, clad in a white silk stocking. The gleaming pink of the little shoe, for an instant suspended in mid-air, is a bright accent against the soft tones of the background trees. To the left of the painting, a blushing young man gazes up with amazement and delight at what the young woman has revealed. He is viewed from the side, stretched out on the ground, leaning on his elbow. To get a better view, his left arm is flung wide to push aside a shrub covered with tiny pink flowers. The shrub partly conceals him and almost camouflages the grey of his coat and waistcoat. His white periwig and ruffled cravat indicate the status of a gentleman. There is the suggestion of a stream flowing in the foreground, leading us to a white lapdog excitedly yapping at its mistress 
and an older man who is almost concealed in the shadows to the right. Dressed in a similar fashion to the young man, he sits on a stone bridge smiling up at the young woman as he controls the swing with two lengths of rope. On the other side of the bridge, there is a small statue on a parapet. It portrays two baby cupids standing on either side of a dolphin. They lean over the dolphin to embrace as one gazes at the young woman in spellbound admiration. Far away in the distance to the right, the colonnade of an extravagant manor house can be glimpsed through the trees. Fragonard adopted different styles of painting throughout his career. In this small picture, he used the light and frivolous rococo to express the uninhibited and flirtatious nature of his subject. Mm -hmm.